Hello, and welcome back to Learn Acadian. Today, we're going to talk about possessive suffixes. So, in English, if you want to show possession over a noun, we could add a pronoun in order to show this relationship. So here in the sentence, we have in my house, and you can see that this pronoun my is showing a possessive relationship of the first person singular, or I or me, over house. Now in Akkadian, if we want to show this possessive relationship, rather than adding a separate pronoun, we would simply add a suffix to the end of the word. So here we have the exact same thing, in a betia, which means in, bitum, meaning house, and we've added this possessive suffix ya to get in my house. So in the past, we've discussed a couple different states of nouns. We've discussed the basic state, or the status rectus, which is just your standard noun with your basic case ending at the end. We've also discussed the construct state, which is kind of a shortened state, which we can use when we're doing a genitive construction. So today we're going to be discussing a third state, which is the status possessivus, or the possessive state. So as you can see here, we have our stem, and we've added this possessive suffix in order to get the possessive state. So here are our possessive suffixes. So as you can see, there is one strange case where for the singular first person common, we have two different options for the possessive suffix, which we might find. And this is going to vary based off the case. So if we see a noun, which is in the nominative or the accusative case, and it's going to have a first person singular common possessive, we're going to find this long I. So for example, if we were translating a sentence that said, my father sees the castle, we would see abu, which means father, with this long I ending. So it would be abi. Now, if we were going to see a sentence that said, I seized the castle for my father, and that would be father in the genitive, we would see abiya with this separate case ending. But they're both going to give the same meaning of a first person singular possessive. Now, for the rest of our possessive suffixes, we're going to see the exact same thing for all three cases. So for the second person singular masculine, for the nominative, accusative, and the genitive, we're going to find ka as our case ending. And this is going to mean your, but with a masculine noun. For the second person singular feminine, we're going to find ki. So this is again your, but for a feminine noun. For the third person singular masculine, we're going to find shu, which would be like his. For the third person singular feminine, we'll find sha, which would be like her. For the first person plural common, we'll find ni, which would be our, when we translate. For the second person plural masculine, we would find kunu, which is like y'all's with a masculine noun. For the second person plural feminine, we would find kina, which is y'all but for a feminine noun. For the third person plural masculine, we'd find shunu, which is like theirs with a masculine noun. And for the third person plural feminine, we would find shina, which is theirs but with a feminine noun. So with possessive suffixes, there are a few rules which dictated how these would have been added to nouns, and we're going to go over them now so that you understand what to look for when you're translating. So first we're going to talk about singular nouns in the genitive case. So as you can see here, the M, which is called the mimation, is simply going to be dropped off, leaving this short I. So we have sharim, which means king, and this is in the genitive case. We're simply going to drop off this M, and we'd find sharishu, which means his king. Now, if we want to say my king, we would see sharia. And if we want to say y'all's king with a masculine y'all, we would see sharikunu. And I want to point out here that we see there are two short vowels that are ending these syllables. So according to the rule of vowel elision, the second should be elided and we should get shariknu. But because this is part of the possessive suffix, the rule of vowel elision isn't going to apply. So we won't see an elision of this second short vowel. And we're just going to see sharakunu appear as its full form. For singular, nominative, or accusative nouns in the first person, a long I would be added to the stem. So here we have the word ahum, which means brother. And in order to put this in the possessive state, this nominative um case ending is going to be dropped off, and a long I will be added to get ahi. And as you can see, this H is different from the English H, like ha or hat, but is more guttural, like lock. And as a non-native Semitic language speaker, I could still be getting the H wrong. So if anybody's got any tips to help me out with my guttural H, please drop them in the comments below because it would be a huge help. For singular, nominative, or accusative nouns in the second or the third person, these are going to take the construct state. And then if that construct state form ends in an I, the I will be changed to an A, and the suffix will be added to the end. So here we have kete, 
which comes from the word ketum, which means reliability. And in order to put this into the status possessivus, this I is going to be changed to an A, and the suffix will be added to the end. So here we have katashu, which means his reliability. Now, if the construct state form ends in a consonant, then the suffix will just be added immediately to the end. So here we have the word kanuk, which is the construct state form of kanukum, which means seal. And in order to put this into the possessive state, we can simply add our suffix to the end to get kanuka, which means your seal with a masculine subject. So for plural masculine nouns, the suffix would have just been added to the end of the word with no change. So here we have tsabu, which means soldiers. And as you can see, this long U denotes that it is a plural nominative case ending. And in order to put this into the possessive state, the suffix would have just been added to the end of this word. So here we have tsabusha, which means her soldiers. And this would have been the same for all different case endings. So if we had tsabi, if that meant genitive or accusative, this long I, which would have been used at the end, would have remained the exact same when the possessive suffix was added. Now, if it's a plural feminine noun, then the only thing that's going to happen is the M at the end, the mimation, is going to be removed and the suffix will be added. So this is similar to genitive nouns in the singular. So here we have ashatum, and this long A is showing us that it is plural, and this means wives with a nominative ending, a nominative plural ending. And in order to put this into the possessive state, this M is going to be dropped off and our possessive ending is going to be added to the end. So ashatushunu is going to mean their wives with a masculine subject. So now that we know how possessive suffixes were added to nouns, it's important to note that assimilation sometimes occurred when these possessive suffixes were added. So whenever a T, D, emphatic T, sheen, tsade, or z was brought into contact with the sheen of a possessive suffix, these would assimilate to give us a double S sound. So here we have bit shu, where this bit stem, which comes from bitum, is coming into contact with the shu suffix. Now this would have assimilated because it's a T and a sheen to get bisu with this double S sound. And this is the case for all possessive suffixes. So whenever we see shu, sha, shunu, or shina added, and these consonants are gonna come before at the end of the stem, this is always gonna assimilate to a double S. So it's important to keep your eye out. If you see something with a double S where you don't expect it, it could be a possessive assimilation. Lastly, it's important to note that possessive suffixes could be added to things other than just verbs. So adjectives, which function similarly to verbs, could also take a possessive suffix. So if we had the adjective fast, it could take the possessive suffix to mean his fastness. Infinitives could also take a possessive suffix, like for example the infinitive running could be given a possessive suffix to mean your running. Participles also can take a possessive suffix. And a participle is something that expresses the doer of an action or the passive receiver of an action. So this could be something like the one who cooks. So you could see this take a possessive suffix to mean something like your cook. Some prepositions also take possessive suffixes, but these function slightly differently than the previous three. So adjectives, infinitives, and participles all are going to take a possessive suffix, which translates roughly the exact same as a noun's possessive suffix. Prepositions, on the other hand, have a different translation. So here we have the preposition ele, which means upon or over, and the possessive suffix shu, which is a third person singular masculine possessive suffix. So rather than translating this as his overness or his uponness, this shu is almost the object of the preposition. So ele shu means over him or upon him. Now it's good to know that ina and ana never are going to take possessive suffixes. But other prepositions, such as balu, which means without, or mahar, which means in front of, are likely to take a possessive suffix, which would be translated in the same way. So if we had maharshu, it wouldn't mean his in front of -ness, it would be in front of him, with shu being the object of the preposition. So thank you everyone for watching, and I appreciate your support for Learn Acadian. Now for the rest of the summer, I'm going to be in the home stretch for writing up my dissertation, so wish me luck and I'm going to try my best to keep producing videos. In the meantime, I have a cuneiform challenge for everyone at home, which features two parts. Part one is to translate this word and locate the three laws from Hammurabi's code, which feature this word. Part two is that one of these laws has a word with this sign in it, and I want you to try to translate what this word is 
and a hint is that I mentioned this word earlier in the episode. So good luck and happy translating.